Hello disciples, welcome back to my channel. This is your sister in Christ, Charmel Dormitra. You can call me Millie if you are a part of this family. Yes, I am so excited because I get to share another testimony with you guys concerning how God confirmed that I am officially spiritually mature. There's two main confirmations and physical manifestations of certain promises that he gave me that I am just so excited and stoked to share. But first, before I say anything else, you guys, I have to pray because I have started this video one too many times and I just really feel like the enemy is trying to interfere with me getting this word out. It's not something extremely long or drawn out that I need to share, but it is pertinent for me to share as I continue to upload content and share some progressions of my spiritual walk and journey with you. So please join me in bowing your head so I can say a brief prayer before I continue. Heavenly Father, I just come to you and I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your un dying love, Lord, your love that just is forever and endures forever. Lord, I just ask that you speak through me during this video and that whatever comes out of my mouth is only what you want me to share and what you want me to say to your children. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that everyone watching this video is not only inspired, but receives openly your truth, Lord, your encouragement, your wisdom, and your understanding about who they are in Christ and whose they are, Lord. Just let everything unfold as you have willed it to be. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Okay, Whew. I always feel like praying is so important, you guys, because obviously it helps with not only my nerves and jitter, but it just helps invite the Holy Spirit in to this word. Okay, Whew. so let's just go with this. If you have not already watched my video that's titled Three Miracles That Happened to Me After My 11 Day Fast, then I encourage you to please go and watch that video because two of the concepts that I'm gonna be talking about concerning God confirming my spiritual maturity comes from that video. One particularly, which kind of just blows my mind, is something that I'm going to really focus on and kind of give specific examples of these physical manifestations of God's love, wisdom, and blessings so that you guys can understand how perhaps it may apply to your life. And then seek and ask God to give you special, unique confirmations for your own personal maturity journey, okay? But yes, I'm going to share a particular scripture you guys because this scripture pertains to what I'm going to be talking about so I'm looking down at my phone okay but before I read the scripture I want to just share that this has not been a short journey okay what I'm going to share is nothing that came overnight Again, if you go and watch that particular video I mentioned, then you will understand that it's been a year and a half process essentially that God began to let me know that I'm growing. Even though things got really, really bad and messy and nasty and my world was upside down at one point, God showed me that he was still in the midst of it all, that he never left me nor forsaken me. When I was steeped in my sin, you guys and the sin was taking me down to my grave faster than I can say heaven God still stood by my side and in all of that he redeemed me he pulled me out of the miry pit and he set my feet on solid ground okay and I just want to be able to give those who are watching this video some hope some encouragement maybe a little wisdom for how to understand whether or not you are on that straight and narrow path that leads to life and that you are running quicker than you can say high calling from that path that is wide and leads to destruction because i once lived on that path and i was greatly deceived okay even professing the name of Jesus Christ, I was still being deceived. There was too many 
open inroads and footholds that the devil had in my life. And now he is clamoring, you guys. Satan is saying stupid stuff, whispering in my ear, begging me to come back to the dark side. And it's crazy. And I'm also going to share a couple prayers, you guys, that I did several years ago, at least seven years ago, that I didn't know what fruit it would yield. But be careful <laughs> what you pray for. And here's the thing. Don't steer away and or shy away from bold prayers. Say those bold prayers, but be prepared to receive the answer. And I think throughout this journey, I've had to reacquaint myself with the prayers that I've done, accept them and say, wow, Lord, this is how you decided to answer it. Okay, here we go. I'm in it. And that's what it's going to be. And I'm making it through. God is with me. And I'm just so excited. Okay, very quickly, you guys, I'm going to try to be quick. But again, Holy Spirit is just going to take over and share what needs to be shared through me. First things first. Now, one of the major confirmations that Jesus shared with me that really just helps confirm my spiritual maturity and how supernatural acceleration played in all of this, you guys. Like, when I talk about supernatural acceleration and time redemption, it is real. God can redeem years and years of your life that you squandered and that you spent in the hands of the enemy in the devil's playground under the sway of his evil devices and he can really truly bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light like that snap of the finger piece of cake for jesus and i can confidently say that that's what he's done for me in one year out of 21 years of living contrary to the word of god and his truths and his will and his commandments. I didn't realize how much I was picking and choosing and being inconsistent in my walk with him until I realized it, okay? 21 years it took because all of those small compromises and all of those little moments of compromise and saying, you know what, Lord? I'm gonna do it like this and I'm gonna hope and pray that it turns out differently for me. I'm gonna hope that I'm the exception to the rule. And all of those days and nights that I spent rebelling against his commands, it caught up to me. And each and every time Satan had an inroad, he had an opportunity to deceive me. He had an opportunity to study me and to know exactly what he can do or say or how he can use others in my life to lead me further and further away from God. And it's just those small steps, you guys, that amount over time and they get compounded over time. So by the time 2022 came, everything was all out of whack, everything. My whole life was turned upside down to where I finally came to my knees and realized that I need to stop serving man, stop putting my faith and trust in man, and I need to put my hope in Jesus' unfailing love and cling to him like I've never clinged to him before. And that's what I did. And all last year, 2023 was the year of recompense. It was the year of redemption. It was the year of simply being consecrated, purified, and becoming holier by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by my might, not by my own power, but by the Holy Spirit was this made possible. And that's why I have now been released to begin to share my testimony. And I haven't even gotten into the nitty gritty stuff, okay? There's a lot more videos that I know the Lord is gonna lead me to share with you, but I'm only truly following his lead when it comes to what to post and when, okay? Now that I got that intro out, let me just get started. You guys, Jesus gave me all of my hugs. Woo! I got all of my hugs literally manifested in the physical. Now, some of you guys are like, what? What are you talking about hugs? I'm going to be courteous in this video and I'm going to repeat myself. But again, please go and watch all 
of the videos that I have posted up to this point, but the one particularly entitled The Three Miracles That Happened to Me After My 11 Day Fast. Go and watch that because I introduced this concept of hugs, but just to be nice, okay, because we're supposed to be loving and nice, I am going to post the one video that God used to confirm that he truly is giving me dreams, you guys. He began to give me dreams about the spiritual survival, maintenance, and growth process that I'm on. And this is the Instagram video from a doctor, Dr. Robert, that he used to confirm like, yes, I'm really going to do this for you. So watch this video. Did you know we need eight hugs a day for maintenance? We need four hugs a day for survival. We need 12 hugs a day for growth. Hugs are important for a lot of reasons. They strengthen your immune system. They increase your feelings of safety and belonging. They boost the hormone oxytocin, which heals feelings of loneliness, isolation, and anger. So please hug your kids, hug your spouse, hug your parents. Uh, you can even hug your pets. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yes. When I saw this video, I couldn't believe it because it was by the time I saw this video that the Lord had already given me dreams of about three hugs. In my last video where I introduced this, I was kind of all over the place about the time frames of when I receive these hugs. I do have it saved on my phone, but I'm not going to read it verbatim. But it dawned on me that by the time I saw this video, I was like, oh my gosh, that's what the hugs mean. Because God was giving me these hugs in dreams where I was hugging people, people that I knew, family members, old friends, acquaintances, and I didn't understand why. And by the time I had the third or fourth hug, I believe the fourth hug was with my sister-in-law. I was like, Lord, what does this mean? And then I see this video and he spoke to me, he said, if you want to know that you have grown spiritually and you have overcome the temptations, the soul trauma, the soul damage and influences that you have been under and bound by for so many years, then I'm going to give you these hugs to demonstrate that. And as I begin to receive these hugs, I begin to feel different energy, different connections within my soul and just literally things clicking in my mind. I was growing and being healed at the same time. And again, because I get so excited, but I forget that whenever we have something spiritual that we give birth to you guys, whether good or bad, because spiritual fruit can be good or bad. That's why Jesus says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. And trees are birth. They're the physical manifestation of the tiny seeds that we plant in the ground. And it takes faith and it takes not only faith in cultivating, but watering those seeds in order to see them sprout. So that's the spiritual component that we put with growing anything or conceiving anything. It starts off as a seed, okay? That's why Jesus says, all we have to do is have faith as small as a mustard seed and we can toss mountains into the sea, okay? And this is real. Now, as I said, he began to give me these dreams, but the very first dream that I had was over now because it's 2024, it was two years ago. And that was the dream of my inner child. And, oh my gosh, I have received, and I'm going to explain the most important hugs and, and why they contributed to my growth journey and spiritual maturity in, in all, okay? But it was on, what's today? Today's Sunday, the 14th. And on the 12th, I received my last and final bonus hug, okay? Yes, I received not only the 12 hugs that Jesus <laughs> literally gave me dreams about 
in the spiritual, but those 12 hugs manifested in the physical with different people. But because of the circumstances and any situation I was in, as I received physical hugs from strangers or from a couple people that I knew, God literally was able to help me make the connection as to which hug in the spiritual that physical hug pertained to. And it was just miraculous. And so when I received the sixth hug, you guys, I was like, okay, what's next? Well, it was that God led me to Arizona to receive the maining hugs. The maining. <laughs> I'm so excited. He sent me to Arizona to receive the remaining hugs, okay? It was in Arizona that I received about six more hugs at Andrew Womack's Gospel Truth Conference. Y'all, I was not expecting it. I met beautiful women and connected with them, received deliverance and healing that gave me peace that surpasses all understanding. And it was just all out of obedience and faith because I did not want to go. I'm just telling y'all, I did not want to go because I didn't want to ask my cousin to stay with him. There was pride. There was all of these things that was you know, kind of holding me back. But then God gave me another dream, right? He gave me another dream and showed me that I was squatting on my blessing. I was sitting in his way. So I had to move out of the way. And if you guys want to hear that testimony, watch my last video that I posted called 12 Days of Peace Blessings. Okay, just watch it. It's cute, but watch it. But yes, it was there that I received the last six hugs. And then it was just two days ago on the 12th where I received three bonus hugs. On the 12th, I was led to Life Surge event. It was like a conference and I had the opportunity to meet Ed Milet, Nick Vejusic, I can't pronounce his last name, the man that writes the book Life Without Limits. And then I met Priscilla Shire, as well as Tim Tebow. And I was able to do a photo op with them. It was just a miraculous event. They had tons of other male and female speakers that glorify God through their businesses and their entrepreneurship. And it's just beautiful. But I had front row seats and it was there that I received three hugs that I was not expecting. The last hug I received was from Priscilla Shire herself. When I went to go and do my photo op with her she held out her hand so big and grasped me so wide and I and, and so tight and I just was like wow but it wasn't until after the event as I pondered and meditated on my experience God said you received your your 16th hug and I was like so that's what the three hugs represented that I received at the life surge event he said yes well you guys here's the thing in the midst of receiving these spiritual hugs before I even received any in the physical, I begin to kind of feel like, Lord, some of the hugs that I'm giving and receiving from these people in my dreams, I don't know. It kind of has a bad connotation because some of these people represent actions or behaviors that, you know, seem like they're things that I shouldn't be doing. And he began to explain to me and show me that he had been sovereign throughout this whole time and that the life choices and decisions that I made, he already knew I was gonna do, but they were supposed to happen in a way. Like he blocked a lot of things from coming to fruition and coming to be. And I'm gonna tell you guys one example of that because it was going to block the greater blessing and plan that he had for my life. For example, one of the hugs I received, and this is when I begin to feel a little discouraged because I was like, I don't want to abort anything. I had a hug with a old friend that I went to high school with. And this particular girl, I know she had about a few abortions, right? Because she was in a long-term relationship with this boy, but for different reasons, maybe the, you know, toxicity of the relationship or her just knowing that she didn't want to be with him. And like I said, we've talked and stuff. She revealed to me that she's had abortions with his children over the course of the eight years that they were together. And so when I had this dream with her in it and I saw three children following her, 
I was kind of shook because I'm like, Lord, seriously, you're telling me that these hugs represent my growth journey, but yet and still I'm having dreams that depict things that I know you're against. Like, are you saying I'm going to be aborting children soon or whatnot? And again, it wasn't until I received the physical hug that it made sense. And pretty much God revealed to me through that particular dream that even though she represents abortion of real living offspring, viable offspring, yes, he told me and revealed to me that unbeknownst to me, there was times in my life, obviously, because I had been married for eight years and I've had relationships with people that when I was sinning and outside of his will by shacking up with people that are not my husband, you know, fornicating outside of wedlock and all of that, God blocked all of the times that I could have become pregnant. And he not only blocked all of those times and opportunities, but it was his sovereignty that did that because he knew the end from the beginning that if I sh would have had children by those people that it would have caused more pain in my life it would have caused more trouble more struggle and all of these things so even though I never came to know or understand or you know recognize that I was pregnant in the spiritual realm God knew that I had and there's one time that I believe I was and God already spoke to my heart about it but it ended up in an early very early miscarriage and so at the end of the day I believe that again because God's sovereign and he has greater plans for our lives than we have ourselves he does allow things to be and not be okay according to his will and purpose and so that's why I had the dream about that particular old friend but he also showed me the flip side. He said, Charmel, this also represents the abortion of businesses, plans, goals that you are conceiving that are not a part of my will. And yes, this dream represents that you will be faced with having to abort those plans and those dreams and those goals that are not in alignment with who I have called you to be. So that's just an example, you guys, of how intricate and detailed a lot of these dreams were. I, I, like I said, I had 13 of these dreams. One of them, I must admit, I left out because it involved an ex, but he was in the likeness of Tyler Perry, okay? <laughs> but yes, I did have the second dream, actually, that I kind of was disregarding, but God said, no, that counts because you received a hug at that Andrew Womack conference where I see six hugs that represented that the physical manifestation for that spiritual dream you had and that dream involved my ex but he was in the likeness of Tyler Perry giving me keys to a vehicle and I was so excited and I was jumping up and down and he hugged me and now God has since let me know what that represented and it pretty much represented that he was a person in my life that God allowed to give me an opportunity that I otherwise would not have received, a vehicle, if you will, to allow myself to walk through future doors, if that makes sense. So again, I believe people come in our life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And sometimes the reason that they come into our life it works itself out for the good later, but in the process, that relationship could be tumultuous, it could be toxic, it could be unhealthy, and it ends badly. But yet, how many of us know that God works all things together for the good to those that are the called according to his purpose? And that's just what it is. And so all of these different dreams that I had in the spiritual realm first, there had to be the physical manifestation of me receiving these hugs to demonstrate that I indeed have reached spiritual maturity. Now, this is the perfect place to read this particular scripture that speaks to this. This is from James chapter one, and it reads, and I'm going to read from verse two to eight. It says, 
Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Verse four, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Verse six, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. The person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. And verse eight, such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. You guys, this is why I shared with you, you gotta be prepared for the answered prayers that you received because I have been praying and asking God for multiple things. But one of the things that I was asking him was for me to grow and for me to truly understand what his will and purpose is for my life and for me to shed and expel all the things that are not of him. And so the trials and tribulations that I had to go through to even tap into some of these hugs spiritually and then the physical manifestation, it required me to make decisions sooner than later. That's why even though it took a total of about two years for me to experience this spiritual maturity, I had to put in the work and we have the opportunity and the free will to go as fast or as slow as we want to. Like I said, it took 21 years of sinning for me to even get to the place of seeing what and checking out what God has to say about my life and where I stand in terms of being spiritually mature. But it took only two years for me to buckle down, renounce and denounce all of the sin in my life and apply the weapons of my warfare, praying, speaking in tongues, fasting, reading the word of God, rebuking, binding, okay? All of those weapons of my warfare, I had to engage in regularly to get to the point of freedom that I'm at now. And yes, I'm just very thankful that he decided to give me these hugs. But after I received the 13 hugs, you guys, like I said, that was on the day I went to Arizona. When I had the encounters at the life surge event just two days ago, he gave me three more hugs and it's because of this. As I said, as I was having dreams about these people that didn't necessarily represent favorable actions or attributes, I was like, God, listen. And I felt so proud saying this prayer because I was like, I don't want to put all my faith in these hugs and these dreams and all of this and these signs that God's giving me as a sign of my spiritual maturity. And so I said a bold prayer, I said, Lord, I can give up all of these hugs. You don't have to continue to give me hugs that represent my spiritual maturity. All I want is a dream that gives me hugs, give, that gives me a hug from you. I just want a dream where I'm hugging you because one hug from you can cure and heal everything. And I said that, but you guys, how many of us know that we serve an awesome God that can do exceedingly abundantly all we can ask or think and you know what we are his laborers we are the people that he uses to go out into all the world and preach the gospel share the gospel and love one another and therefore he gave me three hugs two days ago that represented the father the son and the holy spirit and when he revealed this to me it was crazy because these people had a familiar spirit of other people that I've met in my life, but God showed me the attribute and why he used them to give me hugs to represent the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit because it was, you know, something that I am now mature and wise about doing now. For example, the first hug I received, actually, I'm sorry, I received two hugs from the event, but the third one I received the day prior at work. So I received a hug from my coworker and it was because I helped her with some soldiers check-in at my job. I work with the military. And that day she gave me a hug because we hadn't seen each other. Well, we gave each other a hug because we hadn't seen each other for a while. And 
I didn't think anything of it because I was like, I already have all 13 of my hugs. I already have them all. So, you know, why, why would it be anything different? Well, Jesus quickened in me that that hug is one of the exceedingly above. And then he later revealed that that represents the hug from the father. And I said, why the father? He said, because Charmel, there is a change in you that has occurred. This particular coworker said to me one time, she says, I love to wear dresses, you know, and not for any particular reason. She just likes to wear dresses. It suits her. And I didn't think anything of it, but because I did my 11 day fast and the first day God quickened in me to just change my dress. I wear dresses and skirts now as a way to honor God with my body and be more modest. And I was wearing a dress. I looked different from the last time she saw me. When she saw me, she's like, oh my gosh, I almost didn't recognize you. You look so beautiful, you know? And I told her a little bit of my testimony, how God has changed me last year. And, you know, I now wear dresses. And so God was saying, you know, that's a command that I say in my body is for women to, you know, continue in modesty and humility. And you have tapped into that and you are sealed with that. Then when I had the second hug at the life surge event, it was from a girl that literally resembled one of my old graduate school friends. Her and I hung tough and were very close. And this girl was the same ethnicity and just kind of talked the same and had the same mannerisms, but she was so sweet and kind and loving. And her and I connected immediately at this event. And so after the event, I said, Lord, dang, she reminds me so much of so-and-so. And he was like, well, the hug that she gave you represents the hug from Jesus. And I said, really? He was like, yes, because this friend, when her and I hung tough during graduate school, she was in a relationship with her now husband at that point for eight years. And even though they weren't necessarily doing everything biblically um, and she was Catholic, I witnessed to her a few times and stuff and she was just content in her situation but one of the things she said to me was that her then boyfriend now husband was the first man that she had ever been intimate with and she told me how when she was in grade school and stuff despite her upbringing and her background and her life trauma she always just had it in her mind that you know she would flirt with guys but she would say you you can't get this like i'm a prize and she told me that she said that she always thought of herself like you know it's not going to be easy to for a man to just get what i have in concerning her body and so forth and her virginity and when i had that hug with this look-alike as i call this doppelganger of her <laughs> god is just confirming that as I am living in Christ and I'm a new creature in Christ, that hug represents the solidification and that spiritual mature attribute whereby I am sold out for Jesus. And there is no way that I can go back to what Jesus delivered me from and engage in any form of premarital sex or fornication. It's just not going to happen because Jesus really worked on me and I worked also hard i put my faith with my works to the point to where i can't go back to that place of depression and sadness and death because the wages of sin is death and so that was sweet that god confirmed that to me with that hug from that girl and then the last hug as i mentioned was from priscilla shire and it was because watching and hearing priscilla shire preach essentially and speak at this event I was just like God I know you put this in my heart to do this as well and you're already kind of getting my feet wet through my YouTube channel but I do see and remember the vision that you gave me when I was eight years old where I was speaking to multitudes of people and I remember that promise and sure enough that hug that Priscilla gave me just pretty much confirms that I am in go mode it is time for me to step out and let God use me as the vessel of 
the labor of the gospel that he desires me to be. And at the end of the day, he wants me to be bold. He wants me to be courageous. He wants me to be loving and love people with the truth, but not hold back the truth, right? And it was just beautiful that I got those hugs from the Holy Spirit because we cannot deliver messages of truth and prophecy from the Holy Bible in of ourselves. It has to come through the Holy Spirit, which is why I had to pray because the devil was trying to make me feel a certain way. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? So yes, that was confirmation number one, major, major confirmation number one of my spiritual growth journey. And this knowing that I have grown spiritually and God used a very unique way, a peculiar way to let me know like, yes, Termo, you're on the right path. And speaking of right path, let me share this with you. As I was driving home from the valley today, I was in tears just worshiping and thanking God for his goodness. And I heard the Holy Spirit say clearly, you're doing what's right. And I think he just said, you're doing right. And then a few seconds later, I heard him say, you will find your husband there. And it was just so clear, like I'm hearing the Holy Spirit, like there's a distinction between, it's one God, but they, I'm telling you, I've been hearing God's voice since I was eight years old. God's voice to me is, he's been dealing with me since I was a baby, a child, okay? And his voice is booming. It's more like audible for me. But I've also heard Jesus' voice and it literally sounds like thundering waters, you guys. Oh, but I've been hearing the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's voice is distinct. And I love how the Holy Spirit speaks because his voice is very just short and to the point, very concise. He'll just say short sentences and I'll understand like, he will quicken in me the full understanding, the wisdom that I need to understand the message. And so again, when I heard the Holy Spirit say, you're doing right. And then a few seconds later, you'll find your husband there. It was just confirmation like, wow. And then the Lord began to minister to me more and say, it doesn't matter the trials and tribulations you go through and the persecutions you get on living in this path. You've changed. You're a new creature in Christ. Continue to walk on this straight and narrow path. You won't be liked by all. You won't be loved by all. But just know that you can't go wrong doing what's right, following my commandments, and just staying in my will and being in alignment with my plan for your life because you will always be blessed with the best. And when he told me that, I was like, thank you, Jesus, and I glorified him more. But yes, that goes along the lines with the second confirmation, you guys. And the second confirmation really just has to do with um, my name. If you guys recall my last video, I say new year, new name. Jesus began to reveal to me my new name for my social media accounts. And I had announced that he revealed to me that my inner child's name is Millie, which is my childhood nickname. And it's, I just love the concept, again, the unique concept that he gave me and used concerning exposing and revealing to me how I had helped my inner child, which is the core of my spirit man, okay? Our inner child, go back and watch that video because I'm not going to repeat myself again in this one about this, <laughs> this concept, but our inner child is the spirit man and or woman that lives inside of us that is already perfect. And I shared the scripture about how Jesus addressed his disciples about us having to become like a little child to enter into the kingdom of God. And it's so true. And so you guys, I received my elevation. I graduated. The last video I talked about how he gave me originally Millie. And I was so excited about that because I went from the real deal Charmil to originally Millie. But you guys, the Lord has since promoted me and now I'm officially initially Millie and there's a huge I'm gonna have to do a different video and kind of write it out and kind of show you guys how the Lord revealed to me but in other words the Lord revealed to me he said Charmel consider my word in Romans 12 2 and it says and reads this you guys 
I beseech you, brethren, by the living mercies of God, that you present yourselves or your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you may be able to prove and test what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The Lord quickened the meaning and the deeper wisdom of that scripture to me in 2014, and it still applies today. But he pretty much rewind, reminded me that each name that I had was an elevation from his good, acceptable, and perfect will. Now, good is good. And good, according to God, also is somewhat in alignment to the definition of what man considers to be good. But how many of us know that being good does not get us into heaven? The rich young ruler was a good young man. He followed the Ten Commandments since his youth as he proclaimed to Jesus, but he was greatly rich. And when Jesus said, you lack one thing, give all of your things to the poor, go sell your possessions and come and follow me. The rich young ruler walked away sorrowful because he had great possessions. And that's when Jesus told his disciples, you know, woe to the rich man because it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So even though he was a good man, he did not have the faith to let the riches go. So yes, the acceptable will is a step up from just being good and God's good will. So yes, good, acceptable, and perfect. And the Bible confirms this because Jesus says that without faith it is impossible to please god and there's different parts of the bible and different translations that says that it could be considered pleasing right good pleasing and perfect will and so the lord revealed to me that when you're thinking of acceptable will it doesn't mean that it's less than good but it's acceptable because you carry faith now you're not just a good man or woman of God, but you are now operating in the faith of God, right? And you may very well be putting your works with your faith by that point. That's a promotion from just being a good person. And so when I received this revelation that the, the real deal Charmil was in alignment with God's goodwill, I was like, and I've always been praying for God's perfect will, right? And then when I received original Millie, God revealed to me since that that was in alignment with his acceptable will, meaning I am spiritually growing in faith and leaning on God and putting my hope and trust in him instead of man, instead of things, instead of jobs, achievements, and all these other things that I've had a habit of doing. But you guys, initially Millie is in alignment with God's perfect will. So I did, you know, update the social media accounts I can. Some of them I can't. I have to wait until a particular date because I've changed the names too much. But all of my social media handles with the at symbol will be initially Millie. Okay? That is more in alignment with God's perfect will. And I'm just, just blown away by how God can confirm different things to us and the Lord also revealed that by giving me initially Millie I am making room for him to work miracles in my life because he is the great I am you understand so yes you guys I mean at the end of the day I'm just so thankful that the Lord has spoken to me and just given me a unique way to understand that I have been persevering and I have been overcoming trials and tribulations so that it can have its perfect work in my life and I can be complete and not lacking anything. And I guess that's really all I wanted to share. I just felt like the Lord wanted me to share this with you. And now I'm gonna just give you a quick word of encouragement. Wherever you are at in your journey with the Lord, you must seek 
first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that all things could be added to you. That's the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he has that pertains to his word and will be confirmed by his word, but it will be uniquely and supernaturally specific for you so that you know you are on the right path with him and it will lead you and guide you exactly where you need to go because God has different purposes and plans and destinies for each and every one of us that all intertwine and they all intertwine and work together for the good for his kingdom purpose so at the end of the day we have to be willing to be receptive open and willing to receive his direction and guidance and let him be a little weird you know let him let allow yourself to be weird in your personal relationship with christ because we're called to be peculiar we're called to be different if we're able to explain every single spiritual encounter we have with the lord in layman terms and in such a way that man that are living contrary to the word of God and do not believe in Jesus can understand, then are we really, really living for Jesus? Because if you guys know, Jesus spoke in parables. Did he not? Did Jesus not speak in parables while he was in the presence of his disciples and many others? Yes, he did. Because he knew that those who had ears to hear, they would hear. And eyes to see, they would see what the Lord's will was and what exactly he was saying, doing, talking about and everything else. So he had to use parables because it was weaving out those that were true followers and those who were not just simply bystanders. And so if we are disciples of Christ, we must be willing to be like Christ. He's our teacher. We are the student. The students can be like the teacher, but the students can't be like the master. That's what the Bible says. And so we can be like Jesus. We just can't be God. God is God all by himself. Jesus himself, he he's the teacher, so he knew he was like he was the real deal. He was, he knew he was the good God that we serve, right? The real deal, the one and only original God creator. But he still submitted himself to God and said, I only speak and say what my father tells me do. I only do what I have seen him do. Get the jits? So yes, we must be followers of Christ, be like him and talk like him walk like him think like him and when we do that it's going to be different it's not going to be worldly it's going to be peculiar and now thank you jesus because i was like praying i said lord i don't even know if i want to share this i don't even know if it sounds right or whatever but this is why he wanted me to share see the holy spirit's taking over now this is why he wanted me to share because i was going to get into this and pretty much say this i shared the process and the two major ways that God revealed to me that I have matured spiritually and I am spiritually complete and it has manifested in the physical realm. Now it's up to me to continue to do everything that I did in maintenance and survival mode to stay at this level of growth because we can revert. A lot of us do revert. When trauma hits, when triggers hit, sometimes we don't know what triggers it, but we can go back to our old ways, obviously backslide and everything if we're not careful. But it's up to me to continue to use the weapons of my warfare, stay close to Jesus, not forget him, give him all the glory, praise, worship, and everything else to stay on this level of growth. Do you guys have any questions? No, I was kidding. <laughs> As if this is live. I'm going to start doing lives in due time. But that's what I wanted to share, you guys. God is great. God is good. He is with us. He loves us. And he wants to be weird with us, okay? And, and, and that's your way of knowing you are close to him. You are his very special possession. You are of great value. You were bought with a high price and that was Jesus's blood, which is priceless. So let him be 
your God. Let him be the, the treasure of your heart. Let him be the one that helps you be different and peculiar in this world because y'all, this culture is scary. It's getting scary. All right, but I'm not gonna keep rambling, you guys. That's it. God is good. God is great. Please stay tuned for my future videos regarding the blessings that God is bestowing upon me. Go back and watch my other videos and look ahead. And, you know, let's cross each other's path. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment below. And I love you all with the love of Jesus. And remember, Jesus gave his blood so you can be saved. And now behave. Woo! Now behave, okay, y'all? Act like you've been saved by Jesus. I love y'all. Bye.